Happy Monday. I hope you are having a lovely day wherever you are in the world. I know it's Tuesday for some people already, but I'm going to pretend it's Monday everywhere in the world because it's Monday here. It's Memorial Day weekend. We're having a three day weekend. I hope you are enjoying it if you are in the US and you are having a Memorial Day weekend. If you're in the UK, I hope you had a great bank holiday Monday because it was a bank holiday in the UK as well. And in light of that, I'm not in the studio. I'm here at the house. As some of you will know, we recently moved into a new house here in Oregon. And so we are unpacking today. We're doing a few bits of DIY to get the house ready. And then I'm back in the studio tomorrow. And then on Sunday, we are jumping on a plane. We're heading to the UK for Fully Charged Live. The reason I'm here in my garage though, is I wanted to run you through some projects that we're gonna be working on in the next couple of months some review units that we've got and some projects and some reviews that we will be doing. So the first thing is this juice box behind me, which is a, an EVSE, an electric vehicle supply equipment or charging station as most people like to call it. This is by a company called E Motorworks down in California. It is a fantastic piece of kit and it has the JuiceNet software running on it. Now, what is JuiceNet? Well, it allows you to connect to your charging station remotely, it allows you to set preferences depending on the time of use that you may have in your, in your local utility grid or to prioritize your charging based on whether the local grid mix is clean or dirty. You can also set it so that it can charge up to a certain number of kilowatt hours immediately when you come home and plug your car in and then it will fill the rest up overnight, which reduces demand on the grid in peak periods. That's really, really useful there. This is a Juicebox 40. It's uh, their most popular model. And we purchased this one for our home, but we also have one on review, which is over here. This is a hardwired version. <laughs> And this arrived a couple of days ago. We're gonna be putting both of these charging stations together and hardwiring them in. Uh, in fact, we're gonna get a hardwired version of this charging station. I meant to buy a hardwired one and I ordered one with a plug. They're gonna sort that out and eMotorworks are gonna send me a replacement unit and I'll send that one back. But then we'll have two hardwired charging stations. And this one is on a long-term loan from eMotorworks. So thank you to eMotorworks for that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use one of the features of the juice box, which is a load balancing system. Now, this here is a 50 amp dedicated 240 volt 50 amp circuit. Now. Normally, you'd only be able to plug one electric car charging station in that. But the juice box has software in it that allows you to load balance. It intelligently knows what the car is drawing. It also knows if another juice box is on the same circuit, you set it up in the preferences and it allows you to split that 50 amp circuit between the two charging stations. So if there's one car charging, that car gets all of the power. If there are two cars that need to charge, then both power uh, outputs are restricted and the two charging stations share that 50 amp load. So this charging station on its own is capable, I think, of 10 kilowatts of power output, as is this one. But obviously, if you put both of them in, then you're going to probably be pulling about five kilowatts a piece, four or five kilowatts each. So we're going to be plugging that in or having that installed in the coming weeks. So that's a review unit that you can look forward to, or review, sorry, of a review unit that we're going to be using. But then over here, we've also had a 50 amp circuit installed. Now, this 50 amp circuit has been installed by our electrician again. So we've got two 50 amp circuits dedicated, one to charging. And this one is kind of general purpose. My wife's into woodworking, so occasionally she wants to use high power 240 volt circuits. So she'll be able to split that with me. But also if we have a review car, at Transport Evolved or someone comes over for a meeting or there's something else that happens, we can install a second charging circuit or rather we have a third charging station which is over in the corner, other corner of the garage and it is a Bosch charging station. It's the one we had in our apartment and it can be tweaked in terms of its power output. You open it up and there's a little potentiometer inside that you can turn to say how much power you want to draw. It's capable of a total output of seven kilowatts. So in an ideal situation, we'd have this providing seven kilowatts, the other two charging stations, five or six kilowatts, depending on the demands of each vehicle that they're supplying. And that means we can charge three cars simultaneously. 
Some of you are watching this and going, well, what about all the power drains on your house? Well, we're lucky. We have a very large breaker box here. And because we're out in the middle of nowhere, because we have well water and we have a septic tank, we actually have a 400 amp power supply at this house. I'm not gonna install a DC fast charging station. Although I will admit, installing a 25 kilowatt fast charging station did go through my mind, but we're not gonna do that. So that is also going to be worked on in the coming months. Now let's show you one of the other projects that we're gonna be working on in terms of review. So we've got about a third of an acre here. And so we need some lawn care products. We're not gonna buy petrol vehicles. We're not gonna buy petrol lawn care products. So we just purchased an Ego self-propelled mower. We're also going to be using an Ego strimmer here. And these two products, I've taken them out for a bit of a test drive this morning. They use a 56 volt lithium ion battery pack. Now, I did some calculations. This battery pack here is about 420 watt hours of power. And it's got a runtime of about an hour. It can uh, operate both the self-propelled part of the mower, but also obviously the blades. And the strimmer has about a 200 watt hour battery in it. But the really cool thing about these batteries, I'm just gonna put my coffee on top of the mower, is that they, they, have, the same, uh, they have the same power uh, connectors. So let me see if I can get this out without embarrassing myself. There we go. So this, this battery and this battery have the same connection. So it's possible for me, for example, if I wanted to, if I needed to strim for large periods of time, I can plug that in and then it just works. And simultaneously, I could put this in the mower, but the mower wouldn't have a very high run time. So you can buy these replacement battery packs, the lithium ion battery cells. And I think they might be, I need to figure out what cells are in here. Maybe I'll take one of these batteries apart and have a look because the end cap can come off. So maybe we'll have a look at that in the future or reach out to, to Ego and see what they were, uh, see what's inside. These units were purchased just like the one of the juice boxes. So I don't want anyone to think that we're suddenly getting a whole load of freebies, but we'll be reviewing both of these units because I know a lot of you have asked why don't you do things other than cars? So we're gonna do some lawn care products. We're gonna do a summer review. So I'm gonna mow the lawn and trim the grass all summer. And then in the autumn, we'll give you a, a bit of an update on how these devices have done, how the lawn's been in the summer while we've been mowing it, if there's been any issues, if the batteries have suffered any issues. And then another thing we're gonna try and examine is how do the batteries survive the winter? Can we put these batteries into storage over the winter and then next spring, are the batteries still going to be working? Are they still going to have the same capacity? Are they going to have any issues with storage? I think these videos are going to be great fun to make. People have been asking, where's the bolt? The bolt is still at the repair shop. It's going to get fixed. We're going to hopefully get that back either this week or next week. Uh, the result of the joyriding experience was that there was some rear damage to the car, which is being fixed. And then we'll be back and that will also be on the road again. The other thing we're gonna be doing this summer is we're gonna put a new tow hitch on our bolt and we're gonna get a trailer so that we can go and cart heavy pieces of wood around for my wife's woodworking project. So you've got that to look forward to as well. I hope this impromptu video, slightly different to our usual studio videos, meets with your approval. As usual, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Hit the notification bar so you know the minute a new episode is uploaded. Not the notification bar, the notification bell. And you can support us through the Patreon. Send us some Kofi so we can eat while we're in the UK because we're paying for that whole trip ourselves and buy some swag from our swag shop. You might still have time if you're in the UK and you want to buy one of our transport evolved pieces of clothing or swag before you come and see us at Fully Charged Live. That's it. Thanks for watching. Keep evolving.